from the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orlando, Florida. It's the Cube, covering Splunk.com 2016. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are live in Orlando, Florida for the Cubes, our flagship program from SiliconANGLE. We go out to the events and extract that single noise. This is Splunk's dot conference, SplunkConf 2016, or SplunkConf16 is the hashtag. I'm John Furrier with SiliconANGLE. I'm joining my co-host, John Walls. Again, kicking off the keynote just went on, we're back. You're a vet, aren't you? I got uh, you're a Splunk vet. I got stamina, like the, like the presidential elections last night. <laughs> <Yeah. But laughs> I got the have, look. But do you have the look? I got the look and the stamina. The I got great look. judgment. <laughs> <laughs> Let's find out why. Chris Howell has. <laughs> Chris is the uh, head of uh, uh, business systems at Gatwick yeah. uh, Airport in the UK, second largest airport in the UK, yeah. uh, busiest single runway airport in the world, yeah. which is how many flights, how many events you said per uh, hour, per minute that you per average? Hour, so we do uh, about 55 takeoff and landings per hour for seven or eight hours a day, which is, uh, yeah, the, the, the world's most efficient runway, which is yeah. pretty cool. So it means we look after about 42 million passengers a year. Right. So you, you've talked uh, about um, the airport being an internet of place. Yeah. That you have so many touch points with uh, your consumers, with travelers. Yeah. Uh, you're also trying to run a business. Yeah. You know, within it, different marketplaces and all that. Just talk about that from a 30,000 foot level, if you will, uh, with the airport analogy. But, um, but, you know, what does that mean about your work how you approach it philosophically, yeah. and then what all that data crunching is that has to go on behind the scenes to make it work. Fair enough. So the, um, the, the ultimate aim and the vision uh, of the airport is to provide that seamless experience from kind of curb to gate. So no queues anywhere from curb to check-in to security, through the departure lounge, into the gate room, and then out onto the plane. So that drives most of our thinking. And as we are, we're a single runway airport, we're pretty busy. It's a pretty crowded sky over Europe. We have to work out how we slot our planes into that airspace so we don't have traffic jams over Southeast England and France and, and, and Germany and, and the kind of the, the rest of Europe. So, you know, philosophically speaking, that passenger experience is kind of forefront, forefront of our mind in terms of a seamless journey. In terms of our, our you know, on-time departure is that key measure when you're when you're getting to the airport. You probably want to make sure that you get onto, you know, get to your plane because you've got somewhere to be at the other end of it. You're going on holiday, you've got a business trip. You want to make sure you get where you're going on time. And what you don't really want is any hiccups along the way. So that, that, that's our kind of our, our mission statement, our kind of our reason for being. And then with the, the internet of place things, if you're traveling through with your family, that might be a little bit more stressful. You've got a few bags, you've maybe got some kids. You know, our aim is to get you into the departure lounge where you can maybe get the kids a bite to eat, get them in the play area, maybe just chill out for a, a little bit of time before you head off on that holiday because it's, a, it's an enjoyable experience, right? If you're a business traveler, so you're heading out to dotconf, you, you probably know to the minute how long it is from the train to the gate, and in your 17, 30, 35 minutes, and you ain't stopping for anyone, you might deviate and pick up a coffee, you are just straight through and you want to be you're, you're aiming to be last on that plane door shut thanks very much and you're moving so how we deal with you because you might be the same guy there with your family there on business how we understand and deal with you to make sure that we remove those obstacles out of your way if there are any and then maybe just try and surprise and delight you so whether or not that's no cues in check-in no cues at immigration which you know is a rare thing anywhere in the world um, you know actually a shop that you really want to see when you go through the departure lounge, eat some great food. All of those things are what we're trying to do to make it more, an, more of an event, you know? So why can't going to the airport be something like coming to Disney? Why can't it be like hitting, you know, kind of Levi's Stadium, is that the San Francisco 49? Actually starting to think about it more as an event and a destination than just like your local coach station or well, The number one place. question people want to know is, is there free Wi-Fi? There is free Wi-Fi. Okay, they've They're, got that out of the way. happy now? Because yeah. that's critical. It's a utility. Maslow's hierarchy of needs, right? Power, <laughs> I mean, Wi-Fi, food. Self-care, that's, that's above Wi-Fi. Okay. Because <laughs> yeah. no, that's where you get into the surprises. Because, I mean, I've found just personally, and I think I've talked to my friends, same thing, is that you got to get there early for security reasons. All the security that's built in around travels there. But Wi-Fi takes the edge off because you can get some work done. Yeah. And then there's the other amenities. 
things also, you mentioned the, the patterns. How do you guys time um, the flight patterns? Because you got things out of your control. Yeah. Traffic. Yeah. A lot of real-time data. Yeah. A lot of data on site. Yeah. How do those worlds come together? So we have a pretty much a continuous stream of information that we get from the uh, National Air Traffic Service provider, uh, the equivalent of the FAA. So the FAA in the States, the NATS in the UK, and then there's Eurocontrol, who are the guys that kind of look after Europe. There's the airlines, and then there's their teams on the ground for ground handlers. They are exchanging messages with us in real time all the time. So, I mean, broadly speaking... So you're ingesting that data. Yeah, we're inge well, we ingest and we also publish, because there's stuff we know that they don't know yet. Right. So actually, which baggage reclaim is yeah. your bag going to be on? Is there a queue at security? Which gate are you on? A lot of sharing. Yeah, there's a lot of sharing. So that collaboration piece, so we've got quite a lot of message integration, about a million messages a day. I mean, that's it was only 6,000 you know, two or three years ago. So the collaboration around data has, has, has been a real growth area in the, in the industry. And we use, you know, we, we got our messaging integration, so all those kind of fun enterprise service bus. But actually, that I mean, that's why I'm here at, at Conf, right? So actually, I use Splunk to ingest all of those data sources and then go, right, Here's how we're doing today. So we've had 600 flights today. 89% of them are on time. 40% of them hit their turn time. So that's the timing from when the plane pulls up after landing, passengers off, clean it, restock it, passengers on and get around. And that's, for, a, for an airport as busy as ours, that's one of the most critical measures. If we hit that consistently throughout the course of the day, when you're doing three or four hops. So give me an example of how that impacts the, the customer. Yeah. They get notifications. You guys manage the services based upon delays. Is there all kinds of? Am I overthinking that, or is that happening? No, no, it does happen. So, in, in terms of all that information we have, we publish that continuously. To if we pick one of our airlines, uh, EasyJet, they're, they're, they do 30 to 40 percent of our flights. We send them a continuous stream of data, which they then use that information in their EasyJet app. Right? Because if you're an EasyJet customer, you've got the EasyJet app. You're not going to necessarily download the Gatwick one. That, that's what you've got. That's where you're transacting. That's where you live. That's, that's, your, that's, that's your place. That's customer intimacy. Yeah, that's your place, right? I have to go to where you are. I don't, you know, I don't try and draw you into my world. I go to where you are. We give the information to EasyJet, and they then use it to help manage you through there, and also let you know, come on, speed up a little bit, John. You're five minutes late. So, so, so you said three years ago, five years ago, it was six thousand messages in a day. Yeah. Now you're getting a million messages a day. Yeah. So you're getting a lot more data, yeah. right? And you're seeing. To, to John's question, yeah. how has that been being translated into a better customer experience? How are you a better airport now with so much more information? Like, what are you doing? How, how are you putting that in practice right now? So, a, a lot of, so, first example, so that, there's a couple of key pieces, right? So, if you take check-in, um, well, there's, there's two bits of tech, technological innovation and then the data measurement and management of that kind of ongoing. So, we have a whole load of sensors in the roof in all of our check-in halls, and we can see all the people moving around. So we have a sense of whether or not you're bunched, whether or not you're together, which allows us to feed that information to the airport and to the airlines to say, come on, get another person on check-in, you've got a five minute, you've got a 10 minute, you've got a 20 minute queue. And actually, one of the most interesting things that's come out of that is, say you're catching the train to an airport. One of the things that historically people used to do take 15 minute averages right now we sample every passenger's experience so we know we know how long everyone took if you're the first person off the train you're, you're, you're golden you are through in one minute you're up in security you are happy if you're a little bit slow getting off that train and you're number 100 number 200 coming off that train you're in a queue for 15 20 minutes because you're the back of the queue and actually one of the most interesting things about the technology and then using it is you get to see that variability that's just quite natural in the way that human beings behave. That. So you guys flex some resources, say, okay, we know the queue will be yeah. 15 minutes, let's maybe open up something else. Yeah. Is that kind of the so, workflow? So, we, yeah, we, we give that to our airlines because they, they have choices about the passenger experience that they want to give a check in. We help them with that by making the data available. But what we also do is we've put so it's basically, if you've seen a self-service ticket machine or a self-service yes. check checkout in one of your local grocery stores, you drop your bags off there. So we've seen, we've seen again for EasyJet, we've got uh, about 60 of these things in one massive row in our, one of our terminals, and 
95% of people get through check-in in less than 10 minutes. So you guys are like, a lot like these sports stadiums that instrument the entire facility because it really is a destination. You're there for a while. That, it's not just check-in, go to the gateway. Yeah, we definitely, we definitely you know, aspire to that. I mean, the sports stadiums have still got a little bit on us because I mean, they've got... they got real games. Planes are, <laughs> you know... Yeah, got, planes are cool. <laughs> planes are cool. But, but they, they do some really cool stuff with the retailers, right? So we've, we've done quite a lot around the passenger experience that is check-in, security, and then the efficiency of the kind of the plane piece. In terms of the surprise and delight within the departure lounge, you know, how we leverage that kind of human behavior piece, where people are moving, where are they going, and work with our retail partners is where we'll start to go next. So, yeah, so that's headroom for you guys. You grow right into that. Yeah, absolutely. So you set the foundation. Yeah. So what is the Splunk solution? So what do you guys have for the tech? So I get it. You've got all this data. Yeah. You have a facility, so you're not the airlines. They own the customer relationship. Yeah. You guys are the venue. Yeah, we're the venue. Okay, so you have the facilities being instrumented. What, a lot of data sharing. That's yeah. the way you guys work. A lot of yeah. things going on. Yeah. And planes are landing. Data's traveling. All that good stuff. Good foundation. What's the solution? What do you guys have for Splunk? And talk about the technology in place. So, and, I mean, the two the two biggest pieces of technology in there are, are Splunk, uh, but also just BizTool in terms of the integration layer. The two work hand in hand. So I, I use them both, one to move the messages around, one to keep an eye on everything else that's going on. Um, and with that, you know, the, 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 the Splunk technology allows me to pull together some of the old legacy applications that, you know, they're not message oriented. It's not used to going through a service bus. So, I get so your data dump into Splunk or? Yeah, absolutely. So data dump that into Splunk. Get information from, you know, all of the flight information discretions, all the guys around it, and then bringing that all together so that I can give the operations guys that one view of, of, of the airport and that situational awareness. In the same way that you'd see an IT operations kind of center with all of their screens, with everything going on, Actually, we're trying, we're doing that. You're taking the hassle away from people going to the yeah. data sources where it's just a lot of work to pry the data out. Oh yeah, absolutely. So some of my colleagues, so the guys that run the airfield, about every hour they used to spend 15 minutes pulling to, you know, going to Excel, going to here, pull it out, dump it in a spreadsheet, yeah. you know, 15 minutes an hour, all throughout the course of the day, we splunk that, the dashboard's there, they do it in real time, it's there for them during disruption. And I mean, so they, they, they estimate that's like four man hours, eight, eight man hours a day. So between you know, that's half, good. We need a half an um, FTE is not to be sniffed at. They can get well, out there it's and also, it's run, also, run the also The work is boring, right? It's just like, <laughs> like, like, hey, your turn to do the extraction and the spreadsheets. And not another yeah. 15 minutes. Well, you know, actually, right? and, and the big, the big point and, 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 and the big benefit for and me There's mistakes is, you can make, all kinds of stuff happening. Like, you like, can do, and I mean, the, the big value for me has been that actually being able to put that in the hands of you know, so if you're the guys in commercial or you're the yeah, guys yeah. in operations, the dashboarding piece allows me to give you visibility of your data. You don't need to ask me, you don't need to talk to me, and that's you know, em empowering empowering my colleagues to do that, because frankly, they're really smart, right? So you're, you're, you're a really smart guy, you know a whole lot of stuff. At the moment, you need me because I've got the keys to the data. If I give you the data, then you're gonna have great ideas, and there will definitely be more ideas that come out of that, and then when you extend that out to air, ground handlers and retailers. That collaboration piece is where you start yeah, to get some really... Yeah, you're air traffic control for the data. You yeah. are the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. So it's almost a virtual airport. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of different runways of data flying into, and you I, want to give it to the people in charge. Absolutely, and I, you know, I give it to... And to be fair to Splunk, they've been pretty supportive of me, right? So they let me, they let me put it up in all of the airlines and ground handlers kind of base rooms um, without giving me any of that kind of license crap that you can get from some people. So, you know, that, you know, that, that, that allows me to collaborate with my partners without having those disincentives of growth, which is the right behavior. So Chris, the number one question that we want to know is, can when we go to Gatwick, can we like cut the line? Can you give a special like internet of things, well, like where I mean, the Splunk, well, you know, alumni? A, well, I mean, what I can do is I can <laughs> say that what we're currently working on is, we do recognize that some people do, do look for that, and for a small nominal fee, you can buy your premium fast pass, right? Because that is an offering people will look at. Yeah. And looking at the data, we can see there's a market there, and you go, right, it's for us. Ten, well, so basically, 10 bucks, and you're guaranteed your fast track line through immigration. She's trying to upsell us. That, and that is actually what happens. I'll happens. buy every single service at the airport. I got clear, TSA, you name it, I'll take it all. Because I just want to get to point A to point B. Well, I mean, we have, you know? we're pretty lucky, right? So, our, you know, our equivalent of the TSA, they let us automate a lot more in 
security on the way through I mean we do 95% of passengers in less than five minutes through security right I don't know what that's like wow for you. the US is really hard we're so <laughs> done Chris yeah. he's got the keys to the kingdom at Gatwick Airport that's the data it's like landing planes land that puppy get that data in the hands of the users great story uh, fascinating real-world application Congratulations, thanks for sharing your, uh, your story here on theCUBE. This is theCUBE, live in Orlando. I'm John Furrier with John Walls. We'll be right back with more live coverage of DotConf 2016 after this short break.